Courage the Cowardly Dog is more disturbing than you remember. Now, cartoons are no stranger to getting a bit disturbing at times, but Cartoon Network during the late 90s to early 2000s had some especially creepy and nightmare-fueled series and episodes. Don't even get me started on Adult Swim. So today we're talking about one of my personal favorite cartoons growing up, Courage the Cowardly Dog. This series that corrupted my mind as a child is an American comedy horror television series created by John R. Dilworth. But today, we're going to be discussing some of the most disturbing, weird, and iconic episodes of the first season, as well as the eerily creepy way the season ended that might just make you question everything you know about Courage. The series debuted with a night at the Cats Motel. The premise for the first episode is simple. Courage, our purple best boy, and his family, Muriel and Eustace, are stopping at a motel. This looks like a crummy place to end a crummy vacation. Courage is already terrified before they go inside, and unfortunately, the Cats Motel has a strict no dogs allowed policy. And Eustace, who is clearly not the nicest to poor Courage, takes him outside and ties him to a post where he decides to scare him for no apparent reason. Muriel smacks Eustace outside the head, which is honestly pretty consistent over the entire series. Now in the next scene, Muriel draws a bath, and we even get a little nod to the original Courage pilot, the chicken from outer space, while well, Eustace decides to just go pass out. But this motel is not what it seems, or maybe it's exactly what it seems. We cut to six spiders above at least six sets of human bones, and we learn that Katz is about to toss our beloved family to the spussy? Oh wait, it's seven sets of bones. Katz starts spying on Eustace and Muriel and promptly unleashes one of the spiders on Courage, who rightfully freaks out and tries to escape. But he tries to escape using a blowtorch, a chainsaw, some exploding sciency goop, which are no match for this magic dog leash, but Courage perseveres and his teeth manage to bite through. But of course we don't stop there, because a second spider plops into Muriel's bath, which probably explains why I've never liked taking baths in my life. Thanks Courage, you did this to me. Now of course Muriel's freaking out as anyone would, and Courage is trying to save her by breaking into her room which is number 666 and a half, by the way. So he grabs the cannon to shoot himself through the window. At the same time, Muriel is fighting for her life to hold this spider back, screaming her head off, and Courage is doing his absolute best job to wake up Eustace, who is absolutely out cold. I mean, he's blowing up bags. He's playing music. Where's this dog getting all this stuff? I don't know, but I love it. Oh, Eustace, Eustace is gone. Well, all right then. Muriel sends Courage off to get help, where he ends up finding Eustace in the spider web, sleeping like a baby as the spider approaches. And, well, he just murders it. He just squashes it like, well, a spider, I guess. So Cat shows up, and Courage just yeets the sleeping Eustace across the room at him to get away, knocks him out, and then books it down the hall until he ends up finding a closet with an army of mutant looking spiders in jars and they are all disturbing in their own right. Katz manages to corner Courage not long after and they start playing handball while Muriel successfully tosses the spider into the toilet and flushes it. So cue montage of old lady getting dressed as Courage is getting schooled by Katz in handball who doesn't even seem like he's trying until he finally decides to try and he knocks Courage down and promptly cracks his neck in a way that will give you chills and make you physically feel pain. He starts choking the life out of Courage and starts to laugh maniacally while dangling this spider over Courage's head. It is absolutely horrific, but that might just be my trauma from a similar experience I had with a rabid possum and my aunt's boyfriend. But just like my grandma who always came to the rescue, Muriel beats cats over the head with a tennis racket and they drive away safe and sound. <laughs> 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 
Well, we've established that there is spooky things that happen in nowhere, and we've had an extremely dark first episode. But let's dive a bit deeper into the horror element of the show, and even throw some references from older horror movies into the mix. The Demon in the Mattress episode opens up with Muriel extremely frustrated with the abysmal state of their current mattress, and I can't say that I blame her. Especially as you get older, and I can only imagine being Muriel's age, all I could want is a nice place to sleep with no spiral metal pieces stabbing my butt. So of course, this is the premise of our episode. Eustace sees an ad in the newspaper and Muriel jumps on the chance for a new bed. She calls the number and they don't ask for any payment information or their address. They just know. Now, if it was me, I'd be a bit freaked out. But remember, Muriel is an absolute vibe and she's just living life on the edge at this point. The mattress is delivered by these creepy mole people, one of which has this disturbing eye that is just like, I can't help but stare at it. It freaks me out. It's, it's, uh, it's creepy, whatever. But this episode, like it is so clear that something bad is going to happen, but it is handled in such a masterful way. The camera angle specifically really stood out to me in the way that they framed each scene. And it just really makes you feel unsettled and not knowing what to expect. And it just sets the tone of this episode so well. We come to find Muriel's possessed by some sort of demon, and they just heavily lean into the exorcist here. I mean, they do the head spinning around thing that is usually unsettling to see. Her head even falls off not long after to add to the creep factor. And at this point, Eustace doesn't really seem to be fully aware what's really even going on. And he sends courage in to try and Take care of Muriel since she likes you more. At this point, we learn that Muriel is aware that she's been possessed and is begging Courage for help. So what does Courage do to help her? He challenges this demon to a thumb war. That's right. Eustace then proceeds to chant some words after the thumb war fails, shockingly, which I guess is his version of an exorcism. And I wouldn't say it worked, but he definitely got more tongue action this night than he's probably gotten in the past few decades. And then, of course, to stick with the exorcism theme, just pukes all over it. In this next scene, it's Courage's turn to attempt an exorcism. And it seems to work. But, of course, the demon doesn't leave the house. It just leaves Muriel and enters Eustace. So what do Courage and Muriel do from here? Courage just bites him in the ass... Muriel beats him in the head with a rolling pin. I don't know how many of these things she has. And then they just roll him up in the mattress, wrap a chain around it, put a lock that's bigger than the bed itself on it, and then they send the mattress with Eustace still inside back to the mole people. And that's it. They just go about their business without Eustace. They just, they just sent him to the mole people. He's gone. Boom! Ah! Eustace, really? <laughs> Stupid dog. Now on to the next episode that has been ingrained in the back of my mind since I saw it when I was younger. And that episode is Freaky Fred. Now obviously we have had a lot of disturbing imagery and unsettling moments in these other episodes, but there's something about Fred that just makes it unsettling, but not in a scary way. I, I don't really know how to explain it, but I'm sure that you know what I'm talking about. So let me know your thoughts about Freaky Fred in the comments. Now, in comparison to the opening of the series, Freaky Fred isn't really that over the top or dark, but there's just something magical about the way this episode is handled. And it just makes it one of the most unsettling episodes in the first season, in my opinion. I don't know if it's the way that he says, Naughty. Or the weird monologuing we get from him as the episode progresses but it's just unsettling from start to finish. At the core, Fred really isn't all that weird outside of his weird kink obsession with shaving people. The episode opens up with us learning that Fred is related to Muriel and not just Eustace, but Courage as well don't seem too fond of the guy and are actively adding locks to the bathroom door. I'm sure this won't come into play later. Fred arrives and we notice pretty quickly he has what looks like a hospital wristband that says home for freaky barbers. More on that later. 
Now, almost immediately after Fred arrives, Eustace is already being extremely rude to him. And yes, he, he's being creepy, but I don't think that the constant jabbing and calling him a freak is necessary. But hey, Eustace also strangles his dog and, and like emotionally abuses his wife. So I mean, hey, I can't really say that I'm that surprised. So moving on to the next scene, Courage ends up locked inside the bathroom with Fred. This is where we start to learn the type of person that Fred truly is. And from what we can tell, he just has a weird obsession with shaving people. We hear this through his creepy monologuing about how naughty he is that he shaved his pet hamster. Now, as he's telling these stories, he's actively shaving Courage, who's absolutely panicking and trying to get away, even making a point to hide inside the toilet. But of course, that's not going to work. Not with Fred on the prowl. Fred not only shaves random people and helpless animals, though. He even shaved a girl who looks like Rapunzel, which he called, quote, my love. I'm sure Rapunzel totally forgave him. He also has this big, bushy, lumberjack looking guy who comes into his shop. And let me tell you, this guy is hairy. He asks for a trim, and I'm sure this is something we can all relate to. I don't even know how many times I've gone in for a trim just to leave with basically all of my hair cut off. But Fred takes this to a whole other level. He buzzes the guy's armpits, eyebrows, hair, and finally this poor man's glorious beard falls victim to Fred's obsession. And anyone who has a beard knows there is nothing worse than having your beard shaven when you didn't want it to be. But of course, this menace is not done. He is shaven courage down to just his tail. Even his paws have been shaved while Eustace is just straight sunbathing and killing time while poor Courage is being tortured. Eventually, after Courage makes a phone call, the home for Freaky Barbers shows up. They put Fred in a straight jacket and haul him away as he continues to be creepy and monologue some more. Now, this is something I really wanted to discuss because I don't think that anyone is arguing that Fred is creepy or like terrified us as children or even to this day. And he clearly has like an unhealthy obsession with shaving things, especially shaving things against people's consent. But does that really warrant being locked up? I don't know. So I'll let you be the judge of that. But what I can say is for whatever reason, Fred has haunted my dreams for like two decades now. Ah, oh! what? Lazy dog. Now this episode, this episode, in my opinion, is by far the most unsettling of the recent few that I've watched, but grabbed my attention so much that I had three pages of notes on my first watch through of this. So the episode King Ramsey's Curse opens up with two cats driving away from a helicopter spotlight. So yeah, they stole some ancient artifact and they're being chased. They stop and bury it near a familiar looking water pump, which we'll get into in a second. But then as they head back to the car, it starts to get foggy. And then this happens. Return the slab, or suffer my curse. Curse? What curse? And I don't know about you, but this episode gave me night terrors when I was younger. And even now, there is just something so unsettling about this ominous voice. It is just pure nightmare fuel. Especially when you factor in that right after he moans that, he destroys the freaking car with the cats inside of it. Like they are dead. So yeah, these crickets or cicadas or whatever they're supposed to be, destroy everything. So I'm sure we can imagine how this is going to go. Also, side note, I always thought that they were literally out in the middle of nowhere and that there wasn't a road that close, but apparently I was wrong, which happens a lot. So I guess I shouldn't be that surprised. 
Courage manages to find the slab, and of course, Eustace, being Eustace, just yeets the slab out the window until the newsman pops up, and he finds out it's worth a big fat one million smackaroos. Now, of course, as soon as he hears this, the greed consumes him, and this causes the drawing of what I suspect to be King Ramses vanishes off the slab. But don't worry, we got some music, waves, and those terrifying bug creatures still waiting. So this guy from the museum shows up to retrieve the slab from Eustace, but when offered only a tote bag for a $1 million donation to the museum, I'm sure you can imagine what happens next. Now, I must say, I don't blame Eustace at all in this specific scenario. I mean, a tote bag for a million dollar donation is a bit ridiculous, but to be more specific, I get what he wants the money for in general. I mean, listen to what his idea of being rich is. Rich, 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 fly swatter, spark plugs, shovel handle. Shovel handle. This poor man doesn't even have a handle for his shovel. Razor blade, light bulb for the attic. Return the slab. So King Ramses warns of the three plagues and that each one would be worse from the last. And this is where things start to take a turn in the episode. The water image vanishes from the slab and the house starts flooding. And I mean flooding. Out of the animals, the furniture, everywhere. The house floods all the way up to the attic. It's so rapid, but in all of Muriel's innocence, she just sweetly asks Courage if he left the tub running again. Like, is this a common occurrence that Courage just floods the house? The water fills up the house all the way to the attic as Eustace just hugs the slab while Muriel and Courage are basically drowning. Not to mention, this scuba gear shouldn't even work, I don't think. I don't know, I'm not an expert. I don't fuck with the ocean. So of course, since Eustace is about to just let his wife drown for this slab, Courage has to swim all the way from the attic to the basement to pull a magic plug that drains the house in like two seconds flat. So obviously we're already off the rails, nothing makes sense, but the water trial is over and now it's time for music torture. What's your, eh? Hey! What? is this song i don't know what it is about this song but it is so creepy but is somehow like really catchy at the same time and and somehow this music is so loud that it is basically destroying the house and like making their ears bleed their ears don't actually bleed but like it looks very painful and it's just a record player like behind a rock i don't understand how this record player is so loud but i, I digress Courage absolutely obliterates this record player. King Ramsey goes, Eustace says no, and now it's bug time, baby. The bug trial begins and oh, my skin starts to crawl. I don't know what it is about large amounts of bugs at night, but they are the single most terrifying thing in all of existence especially when they can absolutely eviscerate a house in like under a minute. So the house is being absolutely shredded apart. And just in the nick of time, Eustace gives the slab back and saves the first floor of the house. Muriel at this point has completely lost it and is cooking every single thing in their kitchen in what I can only assume to be some plea to the bug gods to eat the food and leave him alone. Now, I still don't know. I've watched this episode, I've rewatched this episode like three or four times. And I even watched this episode with three of my friends and none of us at any point were able to figure out why Muriel just started cooking like every food known to man. So if you know, I, I guess let me know. I, I'm, I'm still very confused about this. So that's it, right? The trials are over and they're safe. Of course not, because Eustace decides to challenge King Ramsey, takes the slab back again, thinking that he's out of curses and mocks him, only to vanish and have his soul imprinted on the slab for all of eternity. And for whatever reason, dragged courage onto the slab too, or at least I'm assuming that's courage. 
And now we're finally at the finale of Courage Season 1. This episode, The Great Fusili, opens up with Eustace scaring Courage with his mask before hearing a honk coming from outside. The family goes outside to see this big truck that just says Fusili on it, and it has the comedy and the tragedy masks under the name. The truck opens up and pops the stage out, but... Not just the stage, little lady. The one, the only Fusili magic stage. <laughs> the great Fusili at your service. Yeah, it's not just any stage, like Fusili said. And obviously, as you'd expect, Muriel's interested. Eustace isn't, obviously, and Courage is scared and on edge. Again, obviously. Of course, at this point, Fusili tries to swoon the family. He tells Muriel he thinks she could be a star and asks Eustace what he thinks, which, of course, he promptly says no. Now, obviously, this is Courage the Cowardly Dog, and Fusili clearly doesn't have any good intentions, but damn, dude, Eustace is just the worst. Like, I know that Muriel beats him in the head, but like, bro, he, he emotionally abuses her so bad. But moving on, Fusili keeps trying to convince Muriel and says, And then, oh, then you stay forever. Now from here, the masks change and Courage tries to get Muriel's attention, who as usual is just oblivious. She reads the script Fusili gives her and the applause and cheers that are coming from nothing begins. This boosts Muriel's confidence, and she starts juggling an anchor, motorcycle, and bowling ball. This woman's a god. And then Eustace comes up, distracts her, mocks her, obviously, and what she's juggling just smacks him in the head. And more applause begins. Karma's a bitch, I guess. Suck it, Eustace. Busili uses this opportunity to tell Eustace he's a natural and takes them back to the dressing room and hands them their scripts. Courage is trying to warn them, but he gets thrown out of the dressing room and he decides to dress up and dance for the applause to get on Fusili's good side. And well, it works. The next scene with the whole family is basically just how they are at all times. Eustace is scaring Courage, Muriel beats him in the head, but this time they're dressed as clowns. Courage walks away to the backstage area and finds a bunch of puppets of what look like normal people and three hooks with their names on them which makes Courage realize they're all about to be turned into puppets. Courage rushes back to warn Muriel and Eustace, who ignore him as they are turned into puppets by Fusili. Courage manages to hide inside some powder makeup, and while Fusili is beating Eustace's puppet using Muriel, Courage shows up, and Fusili, who thinks that this powder-covered Courage is a phantom, falls from the rafters and gets turned into a puppet himself. Now this is where things get a little weird. We cut back to the house and let's just play the clip. Nice evening, isn't it Eustace? Long as it don't rain. Stupid dog. Booga, booga, booga. And yeah, that's how the first season of Courage ends. And there's this theory where people think that from this point forward in the show, everything that happens is a manifestation of Courage acting out Muriel and Eustace's lives because he can't imagine a world without the people that he loves. Now, I don't know if that theory is true, but what I do know is that this show gave me nightmares about two decades ago. It's given me nightmares tonight, and now you've been infected too. So subscribe if you like the video and want more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh, and let me know other videos you'd like to see me cover here on the channel. Thanks for watching.